any time you get the thought you hear, that will never work in your brain when you're listening to something. Try to have come out of your mouth instead of that will never work. What experiment might we run? True in professional life, by the way, also true in personal life. For those of you who are married and, oh, that'll never work in our family. Well, instead of that, how might we try it? And this gets to the one thing that I've seen that really truly distinguishes the companies who, after having some initial success, rise and become the truly great 50, 100 billion dollar plus companies versus those that flame out. And that is their ability to run experiments at pace and scale without dropping the ball on their core franchise. I love this quote by Admiral Grace Hopper, who, brought, who developed the COBOL programming language, brought modern IT into the military. One accurate experiment is worth a thousand words. Now, I mentioned not only experiments but, and scale, but pace as well. Why? Because most experiments fail. Here's people is, is from companies that are very good at running experiments, Quick and Google, Microsoft, who spend their careers doing this. Still, 70 or 80 percent of the time, they are wrong. And you can think about this bigger picture level as an evolution in the life cycle of an organization. You start as a product looking for a market or a market looking for a product, and then something hits. And then you begin to manage your core. You begin to focus on managing your core pipeline, your sales pipeline. The companies that become truly great, that reach that next level, have a next level of evolution. They begin to manage their experiments with the same discipline that they manage their pipeline, their core pipeline. And you can think of this as another skill set. You, everybody here knows how you, the kind of metrics you use and the skills you want to manage your customer pipeline, net promoter scores, churn rate, ARR, and so forth. How do you manage your experiment pipeline? Many CEOs, a lot of the CEOs I work with and leaders who are at that stage, at that inflection point, it's ve haven't thought about that or wrapped their mind around it. It is much more difficult to manage a pipeline of experiments because it involves failure and you want to increase failure rate. You want to have lots of failures. Whereas, as you manage your core, you want to decrease. Those are two tensions and conflict. And unless you understand that and unless you build a system, it won't work and you will flame out. So that's what happens to most of these large companies. You see these typical innovation failure modes. I'm not, this is too in the weeds, sort of operating in the weeds uh, uh, for today. But these are the typical failure modes that you see. I don't have a great verbal memory, so I need alliteration, three Fs, focus. Oh, let's, see, let's everybody innovate, innovate. Well, that's really kind of counterproductive. Until 100 people come back and say, here's my idea for a new train, here's my idea for a new t-shirt, here's my idea for a new credit card. You tell 98, well, you know, 98 of them, well, not that. What did you just do? You just created 98 innovation anti-catalysts inside your organization. You need to be very clear of the 20 areas that we might innovate on. Let's think about what those are. Great. Here are the 17 areas in product or strategy, business model. Here are the 17 areas we will absolutely not innovate on in the next two years. That, paradoxically, liberates an enormous amount of energy around the remaining three. If you don't have a framework, you would get things like zombie project that should have been killed long ago, long ago lost in the closet. Oh, somebody said it at a staff meeting, we put it in the back of the closet. Premature scaling, so our customers want batteries. Great, let's do 100 million acquisition of a, of a battery company. Oops, they didn't want batteries from us. Missed opportunities. Friction, oh, I want to run an experiment in one day and $100, great. Vendor, you know, the IT group will take, you know, you're in the queue, uh, purchasing, you're in the queue. This is, again, a lot in the, you know, getting in the weeds is something that sort of takes a few hours to get into how you build a system to kind of overcome these failure modes. 